Welcome to the next session on introduction to AI and ML using Python. In the last session, if you all remember, we were actually going through with linear regression and the logistic regression. We have also discussed when to use linear regression and when to use logistic regression. So these are the two popular machine learning algorithms. And these are the two where you can actually look for a lot of mathematics in it. So for linear regression, I remember that we have discussed in and out about the mathematics of linear regression, but for the logistic regression, I know that we have not discussed that yet. So that would be coming in the advanced session because that would require a lot of maths uh, and it requires some time to understand. So it's not very straightforward. So that was the reason I have not taken that, but I thought I'll give a question in the challenges so that if someone knows the answer, if someone can explore it on the internet and then come up with the answer, but I don't expect the answer to be very honest because anyways, we'll be training you on this in the coming sessions, in the advanced sessions. But if you want to give a try, you can always give a try. Yes. So similarly, I just start with second question because first question will take a lot of maths. And if I start that now, I think it would require complete one or two sessions. So starting with second question, did you look into the internet or like some of the books? What are the different log loss function? What are the different loss functions for classification, logistic classification or logistic regression? If you remember uh, for linear regression, I have told you about mean square error as a loss function, mean absolute error. You can also have mean square error, similarly, so on. So I'm just trying to revise and recap so that I can understand if you guys are doing your homework or not. So did you try finding the solution for the second question guys? Second question is very straightforward. What are the different fun loss functions used for logistic regression? Or let me just change this. Otherwise you might get confused with the logistic regression and classification. Classification is a problem. Logistic regression is a machine learning model, which is used for solving the classification problem. So yes, you are right. Uh, there are different losses. You have mentioned some of them, but in detail, we will be looking at this log loss function in the advanced session, because this is the most used one similar to mean square error, which we use majority of the times for linear regression. We similar to that log loss is a function which is used majority of the time in the industries. So we'll look into that in the future, but it's okay. But yes, third and fourth question, third question. I think I've explained in the previous session. Also, did you try what is one hot encoding guys? So what happens, uh, in real life, you will not be having all the input feature data as numerical data. So some of them are categorical. See, for example, you want to predict the price of a car. Okay. So how do you predict the price of a car? First thing, maybe the engine configurations. Second thing, uh, maybe the chassis of BIW configuration, or maybe the tires configuration, maybe the quality of brake. Maybe if the car has the different feature of like, how is the suspension of the car? Does the car have the airbag system or not? All these features we decide what could be the price of the car, right? If you go for buying a say a car of BS four, that would be less costlier than BS six, right? And if you are buying a car, you notice the windows will not be having the automated roll ones, automated roll ones in the sense, there is one knob. If you push that knob automatically windows come down and windows goes up, right? That facility will not be there for some of the cars at the rear end. You might have to pay an extra amount for that. Whenever you're going to a showroom, you can notice that. And then price also depends on the models of the vehicle, like models in the sense, for example, there are two different cars, say X and Y, both has the same feature, but both are coming from the different clients or different customers. Do you think both the price will exactly be same? No, right. It depends on the brand, right? It depends on their advertisement cost also. So there are a lot of things which are involved behind the cost of a particular vehicle. So let's say in this prediction, I'm talking about prediction. Okay. Not classification now, but this concept is valid for both prediction and classification. 
So while predicting, you notice that one of the input features, say the brand of the vehicle has three different brands. Okay. One, say BMW. Second, say Audi. Third, say Porsche. So let's assume that all these three vehicles don't get into technicalities, not get into mechanical techni technicalities. So let's assume all the three vehicles have the same features, exactly same features, BIW, everything is same, but which would be more costlier, right? So it depends. So BMW is a higher version, right? So it could be BMW, yes, but Porsche is a further higher version of, in terms of brand, Porsche is even further at a higher level. So whenever you Google it, you will notice that Porsche, Rolls Royce, these cars will come in the tire one, Mercedes, BMW, Audi comes under tire two, but that's okay. It doesn't matter, but you understood the point, right? So it depends on the brand also. So you cannot neglect this input feature, which has the brand names such as Audi, BMW or Porsche, right? Second thing, now these are categorical variables. How do I tackle with them? So to tackle with them, we have to convert those categorical variables into numerical variables. And how do I convert that? There are many ways, but I will explain only two ways. The one is label encoding. The second one is one hot encoding. So in label encoding, what happens? It will label BMW as say one or Audi as two or Porsche as three. So one, two, three. So by this, you are converting a categorical variable to numericals, right? So this is one way, which is label encoding. Okay. Label encoder or label encoding. The second one is one hot encoding in one hot encoding. What happens? Suppose you have a single feature with Audi, BMW and Porsche, right? Now, instead of converting that into one, two, three, what it does, it splits this feature into three. And this new three features names will be Audi, BMW and Porsche. So to explain this in a better way, say this is your X1, X2, X3, X4, X5 and Y. Let's say your X4 is a feature which has the brand of the vehicle. Now we have three brands in this data set. I'm only considering three brands to make the problem simpler and to explain it in an easier way. Say Audi, BMW and Porsche, right? Now what happens, we cannot tackle. First of all, you should understand it's not a good practice to ask your machine learning algorithms to tackle with categorical variables. It's not a good practice guys. So you should convert this X4 into say new three variables, say X4, one, X4, two, X4, three. Don't worry about the terminologies. I'm just giving some random terminologies. So this, the feature, the column name would be here would be Audi. Say here, it will be BMW. Say here, it will be Porsche. Now let's say in the previous data, you had this X4 as so you had set data set with lot of different records, right? So let's take starting five records. Okay. Of this data set will have millions of records. Okay. I'm just taking only five records and I'm only displaying X4. So let's say this is Audi. This is Audi. This is BMW. This is Porsche. This is BMW again. Now label encoding, you already understood. It replaces this weird column with one column, which is one. If you are denoting Audi as one BMW as two and Porsche as three. But what happens in one hunt encoding, it will create three different features altogether, right? Now, if I write for Audi, then the first so if this is one, two, three, four, five records. The first one is Audi. So it will write one. Second one is Audi. It will write one. Third one is BMW. It will write zero. Fourth one, 
it is Porsche, it will write zero. Fifth one, it is BMW, it will write zero. Now for BMW, it will write zero, zero. This will be one, this will be zero, this will be one. Can you please label your column, third column Porsche? So it will look something like zero, 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 one, zero. Now, this is your one hot encoding. Now the fourth question is very important guys. This can also be your interview question. What is a dummy variable trap? Now you must be thinking, let's imagine in this way guys. I have a X4 as a variable where I have a brand. Now it's important. I have split an X4 column or feature into three columns, right? Now imagine in this way. The first column is one, one, zero, zero, zero right and the third column is zero zero one zero one and similarly the third column in the first record if you notice there is only one one and the remainings are zeros similarly in the second row also similarly in the third similarly in fourth and fifth right making sense so let's say if I give you X41, X42, can you derive X43 or not, guys? Without looking the data also, can you derive X43? Yes or no? Let's say I have some other data set. Okay. Say this is 1, 0, 0, 0. Okay. This is say 0. 0, 1, 1. I have not given you the parent data set now. I am telling you that X41, X42, X43 are the columns coming from one of the features using one not encoding. Can you tell me what could be X43? Exactly. Right? It makes sense, no? So I don't have to tell you anything about X43, but still you are able to understand what is X43. So what I am trying to tell you here is this X43 is dependent or can auto calculated using the other two remaining columns, right? So your algorithm will be smart enough to calculate this third one. So you don't have to separate out this X43. You can remove this from your data set. Okay. Now, this is about one hot encoding and this is removing that one of the columns is called as dummy variable trap because if I give these two columns indirectly I am giving the third column also to my data set. Okay. So now why is it important to remove this? I have explained to you what is dummy variable trap. This is what is dummy variable trap. But why is it important? Now it is important because linear regression and logistic regression both works on very important assumption which is called as your input features concentrate your input features that means x 1 x 2 so on should not be very good correlated that means for example say if i give you one feature say as the date of birth of a person. Okay. Let's say my new feature X1 is date of birth. My new feature X2 is the current date. And X3 is age. Now don't you think age is dependent on X1 and X2? Because now if for example, if I have a date of birth of a particular person, and if I have a current date also, can't I subtract them and get the current age of a particular person? I can, right? So what we are trying to do here is we are giving a redundant variable as an input variable to our algorithm or extra feature to our algorithm. And you are not supposed to do that. By this, it will create the randomness in the results in the output. Did you understand this guys, this concept? 
that your input features should not be dependent on each other or it should not be very good correlation between input features right now fifth one what is the difference between linear and logistic regression why is this assumption yes so this assumption is important right see for example you are predicting something say it's a normal something you are predicting say y say your output is dependent on your x1 and x2 okay now you are giving one more feature say this is your x1 so this is your x2 now if i draw something like this the, the correlation is very bad between x1 and x2 right and if i draw the curve like this between x1 and x2 the correlation is still bad but say if i have the graph something like this between x1 and x2 now x2 is equal to say 1 by 2 of x1 now x2 is dependent on x1 right if you remember we always try to in our mathematics also if we know that x2 is dependent on x1 we try to convert that our equation we replace x2 with x1 right and then we try to do our mathematical problems in our school days also right otherwise it will become complicated to calculate y do you remember this yes similarly in machine learning also you are not supposed to provide any variables which are dependent on other variables see then what happens then people will start giving lot of variables thinking that if i give lot of input features my prediction will be good but they will not understand this x4 is already dependent on x1 plus x2 say for example x4 is already say x1 plus x2 then why is it required if we are putting this in our mathematical equation this will complicate our analysis similarly in machine learning also if we incorporate this our algorithm will calculate the solution there is no harm in that it will calculate but it will this redundant feature will incorporate the randomness in the result the results might not be that accurate okay so the assumption is because if you remember the r square from your linear regression what is r square coefficient of determination and what is the significance of r square it signifies how much your output variable is influenced by your input features right if your input features is already dependent on your input features then it's a problem right then you cannot justify by looking at your r square value you won't be able to tell how good your results are okay so this will come with the domain knowledge you don't have to worry guys because see for example i have one column as say area and one column as say thickness as a mechanical engineer if i give you volume you know that volume is not required because if i have these two it will automatically calculate volume now if i have a sphere if i give you diameter and volume both the information of volume is redundant because you know that using the diameter you can always calculate the volume right so this is called as feature engineering guys and it is very much important so that you can reduce your number of input features in your algorithm see if i have 10 input features and i am running a machine learning algorithm say it takes 1 hour it will not take 1 hour until unless you have very huge data but still let's say that you have so it will take 1 hour now if i know that there are three variables x8 x9 and x10 are which are dependent on any of from x1 to x7 then i can remove those right by this i am reducing the dimension of my data set and by this our algorithm will become computationally effective right so this thing you have to remember this is called as feature engineering this will also come again in week 7 and 8 okay now going to decision tree what do you think what could be decision tree a tree which actually helps us in taking a decision simple 
right now let's say again decision tree what i am doing here decision tree can be used for classification problems or it can be used for prediction problems you all remember what is prediction problems and classification problems guys so the difference between this regression and classification regression is generally used for predicting the problem for example predicting the price income age classification is used for classifying the input data into say whether the emails are spam or not spam whether the person is married or not married whether the car line belongs to mercedes benz or to bmw whether the problem which we are getting belongs to cantilever beam problem or what all we have are not able to recollect now okay so whether the problem belongs to say i would say thermal problem or it's a design problem so these are the classification problems right now or whether if you have the data by looking at the data whether this component will sustain whether the break disk will sustain or not these are the classification problems right so these are very important what do you think number of people entering into a store is it a discrete data or continuous data discrete right but if i look at this problem say i am predicting i want to understand how many people are entering into the store today by looking at the past data so for this i need linear regression right you can say in this way whenever you have a data within some range then you can go with regression and whenever you are classifying something such as categorical data you are absolutely right then you can go with classification but for logistic regression if i could remember i told you logistic regression is used for classification but the name why it is regression because in build it uses linear regression so that's the reason the name it has a regression but it is used for classification you should not forget that okay similarly decision tree is a multi like we have multi talented people right similarly decision tree is also very multitasking it can be used for classification problems it can be also used for prediction problems but in the industries decision tree is major like it's being used as a classification for classification so when it is used as classification it is called as classification trees when it is used as regression it is called as regression trees now in this course also we'll be looking at only classification tree for decision trees so to get started let's say you have some input data let's say you have a data set and that data set has an output say whether the person is fit or unfit simple now to validate our outputs we will also have some inputs right so those inputs are given in this flow chart what i'm showing you this tree graph kind of tree chart so here the data set name is a person fit simple and our outputs are fit non unfit fit unfit something like this now say one of the input features is age okay let me draw this otherwise you might get confused so let's say you have a data set let's say your output is whether the person is fit or not okay fit or unfit so say fit fit unfit 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 and this output data is dependent on your some of the input say this is your x1 x2 x3 x1 is say age x2 is say does a person eat pizzas the third say is whether the person exercises in the morning okay so this is your data set see guys it's important whenever i give example i take very small examples and small data set but in reality that this will not be a case okay anyways from 6th week onwards you have to start doing projects otherwise you will think that the problem will be so simple only so now we have to identify the class of our output so now we have to predict whether the person is fit or unfit it's a classification problem so for that so now the point is first feature which i am taking say age i will check whether the person is less than 30 or greater than 30 let's say that the age of a person is say 29 here 21 40 33 so what it is doing 
we are trying to segregate our first feature now whether the person's age is less than 30 or greater than 30 let's say if it is less than 30 yes then it's quite obvious right when we are having a age less than 30 quite natural that we eat lot of junk food right i'm just making a general statement guys okay don't get me wrong but it's a general statement and when we are more than 30 it's a general practice that we will be more conscious about our health because we might have eaten so much junk food in our early days right so i'm dividing it this into yes or no so now my data first data is divided based on this criteria okay now if it is yes then does the person eat lot of pizzas if it is yes then it is unfit if it is no then it is fit similarly if a person is greater than 30 then does he exercises if he exercises he is fit if he doesn't exercise then he is unfit right so does this simple flow chart or this simple tree make sense to you guys it's quite logical right right similarly decision tree also works in a similar way now this is a very simple thing but very important why did i start with the age why did i start my root node the first node see you know that our output should be our output right so if i had say multiple data sets for example say if i had say x1 x2 x3 x4 x5 and then y then let's say i'm taking a root node as say x2 i'm looking for yes or no say i'm doing yes or no with yes i'm getting say x1 here and say here i'm getting a lot of say x3s okay and then again i am checking with yes or no and then with yes say i am getting here x4 okay and i am getting here say x5 and all the x3s are directly going into the output like that means when a person belonging with this criteria is directly having a rule that it goes into the output why say some output y as say 1 and then here it goes to y the output is 0 here it goes to a y which is output as say 1 similar to fit unfit right so what we are trying to do here is we are trying to make the tree with the help of certain rules right now the important thing which you want to understand is this is called our root node this is called as intermediate node and this are called as leaf node so how to decide which one will be the root node that's an important question here okay so as you can see uh, i have also given one more example here whether the person height is greater than 180 centimeter yes or no if it is yes it's quite logical that like the probability of people having height greater than 180 being a man is more right so it's a male if it is no then we will look at the weight if the weight is greater than 80 kgs then the output would be male if it is less than the output would be female so it's quite natural right now again when we are trying to come up with this kind of trees the important thing is how to decide the root node see i can take weight here height here okay but in this small problems it doesn't affect if i have say x1 x2 x3 so on up to x10 but then it will become very important to choose this root node in a right way before choosing that root node so i'll tell you on what algorithm this decision tree works decision tree works on very basic divide and conquer rule very basic rule what it tells select a test for the root node some random test okay i am selecting height here you can select weight also in the previous example, I have selected age, could have selected exercise as your root node. Okay. How do you select? That's the second issue, but let's look at the algorithm first. Okay. So select your some random root node from your X1, X2, so on up to X10. Create a branch for each possible outcome of the test. Like what we have done here. Yes, no, right? Split the instances into subsets. Okay. 
one for each branch extending it from the node root node so here we have this is as a root node this as a leaf node there would be some intermediate nodes also as I explained here okay but this is a very simple example so you don't have any intermediate nodes here but in general you can have intermediate nodes also now from intermediate node you have to go to again some other intermediate nodes so on and then at the end you will go to leaf node you have to repeat this process until and unless you tell that one particular rule gives you one particular output now the important thing which we want to understand how to decide which will be this is called our root node 